What's up? So today we're going to be doing Growls and Massive. I put a poll up on Twitter and Massive won. So first things first, we're going to set this up. And the way we're going to set this up is it's a knit patch. Make sure you knit it. Okay. Now go back to the performer. And then go into two so now we're gonna have one that goes down and then up and then you gotta obviously sync it we're gonna do the performer like this down then up and then on the crossfade We're actually gonna crossfade it and it's gonna just be like. Alright, so we have two different movements. They're kind of the same, but not really the same. This one has more of a dip and this one's just kind of a later one. So it's cool because you can morph in between these two movements during your song and as well as slow it down and have different impacts. So we're going to automate the ratios right now. Which we're going to have slowed down. Okay, so we have one slow. And then one fast. And then I'm going to duplicate it again just to have the X fade mapped up. So now we can hear all four different variations we'll be making of this. So I'm going to pause the video right here and then come back after I pick. I'm going to just use one oscillator right now, get a tone I like moving in those movements and then I will be back so you guys should go find figure out an oscillator tone that you guys like okay so I came up with I pitched it down two uh, octaves and I, I picked the math three moved the weight table position over and I feel like that's a good gritty uh, start for this wall or this growl and then we could start shaping it and making it better <laughs> uh, so first things first we're going to try just a low pass 4 right now uh, just to get a little more movement on this shape so about right there is good it gives us a little more whipping on that uh the amp like movement we we're trying to get uh, that cutoff really helps shape it which then we can bleed it just a little bit so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to get in a second oscillator so again you guys I'm going to pause this figure out what you want make sure it's up in a filter one or do whatever you want uh, I'll be right back okay so after flipping through them, I did get some different combinations, and this is what I ended up with right here. Uh, it's trying to go for something different, not your typical growl sound, you know, why I do what's already been done. So this is what we have right now. So it still kind of has that little, like, cheesiness sound to it. Okay, so I just wanted to put the ring mod on. That's the only thing that kind of sounded good for this sound. I'm going to try a little white noise 
just to kind of fill up the sound and see what we could get. And it's just going to be a little. So that kind of just adds a little more energy to it, brings it to life. Uh, let's play with the feedback, see what we can get. I'm thinking just a little teeny bit. I like a little bit what it does to it, but when it goes too high, it kind of just ruins the sound. Alright, so next what I'm thinking is a little dimension expander playing uh, with it which we will put on the second one. And then we will put the size down. I don't want it too big, but what we are going to do is put the performer on it and have a good play with it and see what it sounds like. So that sounds pretty cool. We're going to restart. So something like that really like spaces it out. It's starting to sound a little better. Um, I do have these cheap earbuds in, so who knows what better is at this point. <laughs> now on the EQ, I do want some more high presence in it, so. Somewhere about right there is good. And then another cool thing I like to do for growls, uh, just any kind of movement sound really, is mess around with the boost and frequency. But on the growls, I tend to go a little more aggressive because it gives more character. So let's see what the full extreme sounds like. And then because I kind of like a few of them, I am going to put a macro on there and just kind of like have it the same distance as that, roughly. Because uh, then that will give me that extra movement that I like to get up to that halfway point. So you know, I'm going to read it all the frequency. And then you, again, you see that? You could even... And said, say you want to put on like a. So now you can really kind of morph the sound even further. Uh, but let's just go back to the original sound and uh, put the performer back on here. So the dimension expander is on. Um, we're going to try a few different things mess around with a classic tube and then put the performer on both of them. So I just like that little bit right there, a little bit of the tube. And then the thing I like to do on the low end is kind of go against it so when it's at that peak, I feel like it's sucking on and coming back. And then you can play around with these. That sounds good to me. And then you're going to want to push these. You're going to want to put your pitch bend 12 and negative 12. Because we are going to mess with that after. 
Uh, we're just gonna get the sound just a little closer. Okay. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of that on. I like that little grit it adds to it. We can play around with the second one. Hard clippers are good. Uh, sign shapers are good too, usually. And what I just did, because it, it was saying it's going to only use on filter 2, I just moved it over so it goes through the whole sound. So this one's right after filter 1. This one's going to be before it goes into the effects. And same thing, I'm going to give a little bite to them. And then go back to the dimension. So that's it for me. You guys can do whatever you want in here, like a filter two or anything, but I'm gonna go mess with the pitch bend and uh, just kind of see where we're at with the growl right now. So however you guys get to your pitching, I'm gonna pitch it right now and then I will be right back. All right, so what I did was different pitch bending options. Just to get a wide range. Because you never know if you just want to resample these and just use them as preset, uh, or not presets, but sample shots. Or, you know, just mess around with the sound so you know what it's capable of, and then just save the preset, and then now you have it. So. <laughs> bunch of different alternatives that I can mess with now. Alright, so I just had to mess around with it and dial some things in. And now I'm going to mess around with the scream, the daft, comb, and possibly double notch. We'll see. Let's start with the scream, the classic. So that's an option right there with the screen. It's pretty good as is. I mean, I could pair this up with some other sounds. Then what else you could do is mess around. With the third oscillator. And maybe just only feed it to the second. Just uh, kind of have that as an undertone. And just to EQ it. Out, 
So as you can see, I'm not going to show you guys that because this is like experiment at your own uh, risk. But when you mess around with the EQs, you could add more movement to them and as well as start automating other programs outside of Massive to really beef up your sounds. But this is the patch for you guys. I'm going to save this in the Dropbox folder for you guys. Public free downloads from YouTube, massive presets. Wait, is there a free free preset Friday downloads? How to growl bass in massive. There's your synth for you guys. That's in Dropbox. Don't forget to like, comment if you guys have any kind of tips on achieving your growls. Like what kind of filter combinations do you guys do? Inserts, effects, the whole nine yards. And I only did use one um, voicing, which you guys could switch that out here. So you could you can do all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna save over that for you guys, but that's gonna be in Dropbox. So like I said, don't forget to subscribe. We put up free tutorials weekly. We try to do free presets weekly. We do discussions and talks weekly. We do a whole bunch of stuff weekly. So I'll see you guys around and I'll talk to you in the next video.